What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other stickers. I'm gonna break down what's happening with the economic calendar going into tomorrow, what's going on with other factors involved in the markets, and what you should be watching for as time progresses. But before I begin the information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If we sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. And the offer ends very soon in just two days from now. Anyways, for the market, I said in my earlier video, in my video from yesterday and beyond, that the market would likely go all the way up to this 550 area for SPY before we see a potential rejection. So far, that does look like this might be the case, but we have to wait for more confirmation to really see if SPY is going to truly reject right here. I'm going to be watching to see our 20 EMA if we lose that support or not. That's going to be very pivotal for how we end up moving going forward. So I'll break more information about this down in just a couple of minutes. Also, like Tesla, you know, NVIDIA came down quite a bit, not to mention the QQQ and all these other tickers. They're all seeing some downside and the market is starting to turn red. So the question is, what's happening? I will talk about that once again. So what's going on first, just as a reminder, OK, tomorrow is going to be Friday, June 21st, 2024. 15 minutes after the market ends up opening, we have the SP Global Composite PMI, Manufacturing PMI, and Services PMI data coming out. And we have home sales coming out and everything, everything else is going to be very minor. But what is so important about this? Well, all of this data is going to give us more insights on what's happening with the current state of the economy for these different sectors that make up uh, different pieces of data. And they're very, very important for understanding our strength. So this is going to cause some volatility for the first 15 minutes. So wait and see what happens as soon as this data comes out. Will this lead to a big rug pull? Will this lead to the market potentially pumping? We will have to wait and see. So be very, very patient and also be prepared for some manipulation because of this right over here. Tomorrow's also quadruple witching. We have a lot of options expirations. We have 1.1 million calls expiring tomorrow, almost 400,000, I'm sorry, in the money calls, 1.1 uh, million in the money calls, uh, about 400,000 are out of the money. Uh, we have 16,000 puts in the money and about 3.5 million out of the money puts. So that's something that's very important. Uh, Max Payne's at 508. It doesn't really matter much because, once again, that, that was said a long time ago when these different institutions were hedging and such. And then we also have a 2.28 puts to call ratio. It's also going to be very important. So anyways, uh, what does this mean for the markets? Well, with all the options, expirations, I do expect manipulation tomorrow. We will see if this leads to a little, you know, uh, pump and dump for the markets or lots of manipulation like that. Will the market just kind of chop around a bit? We'll just have to wait and see. But just know that looking at current technicals, there is still a risk of downside. Now, for earnings, I just wanted to call out that earnings are going to be kind of minor right here. We don't really have a whole lot going on right here, but for Friday, we have CarMax announcing their earnings before the market ends up opening. So that's going to be very important for us moving forward. So we'll just have to see how things end up going. Now, I also want to call out that for the fear and greed index, right now, fear is making up the majority of sentiment. Now, why is that? That's because the market has been kind of like at these high values and the market started to become fearful amidst us kind of like going to these crazy high levels. But that's despite the fact that momentum is still greedy. So what does this mean? Why is momentum greedy while the sentiment is fearful? Sentiment just kind of represents the emotion driving the market. Right now, that is how the market is looking a little bit more on the fearful side, looking at how overvalued a lot of things appear to be. But momentum just shows greed because we're still well above the 125 daily move average and we're still technically very very high that's why it's in this greed mode it doesn't mean that sentiment it just means that the market's at a very very high level that's one of the best ways to kind of interpret this for other ways we have the puts and call option positioning starting to go up a bit because we're starting to see more puts being opened as the shorts are starting to pile in again and then simultaneously volatility is kind of neutral kind of in the middle but the vix is starting to break out a bit towards getting a little bit closer to the 50 daily moving average the VIX is gaining some strength. We'll see if we break the moving average or not, but that's going to be pivotal for how we end up moving. So anyways, the question is what's happened to the markets? What do I predict is going to happen? I'll be talking about that now uh, for the rest of this video. So for SPY, as you guys can see, we got this nice little rejection off this 550 area, but don't be too bearish yet. Um, I think there is a good chance the bears have uh, gained some um, you know, somewhat of an edge, but they're not necessarily giving us a follow through move yet. You oftentimes need to wait two days to see if we get a follow through move. So watch and see, do we continue to close below this candlestick right here? If that ends up being the case, then yes, I could be looking for this gap fill all the way down here. But I need to see a little more confirmation for another drop. So I'll be watching that very carefully. So going back to the one hour time frame, if I actually bring up our levels right here, here are the very important levels to watch for going into tomorrow. So we basically have resistance, okay? We have a very, very important resistance right here. 
at not just 547, but also 548.5. If we break past 548.5, we could attempt to push up again. If we end up doing the opposite, we start sinking. We still have very important support at 546, that 546 area. If we close below that tomorrow, there's going to be more downside coming. So look at these two yellow lines. Those are going to be your very, very key levels. If we close below this bottom one, there's going to be a risk of more downside. And that's potentially dipping all the way down to at least 544. Why is 544 important? That's previous resistance becoming support. That's the next level. If we lose that, then I see us coming down to fill the gap at 537. So I'll be watching to see how SPY ends up performing. Now, one thing you want to be looking for is a change in market structure. And that's going to be very important for all these different tickers. This applies for the QQQ, Tesla, and the others. But what I mean by that is, check this out. SPY had this high here. So basically, you know, SPY was down here in the 530s. We pushed to a new high in the 543 area, made a higher high. We made a higher low up here at 538. Higher high, higher low, higher high. The trend was bullish. Now we finally dropped. We actually broke this low right here. So this is a sign that there is a break of structure. So because we did come below this low, we have to watch to see if we make a lower high. If we make that lower high, I'll be looking for a continuation lower. Then we could be coming all the way down to about 544, even lower levels. That is going to be very prob probable if we get that move. So most likely, looking at the daily time frame, looking at the, the way sentiment is kind of shifting, it's very probable that we will see a little rebound, and then we may continue to go lower if that ends up failing. So tomorrow, look and see if we kind of retest like 548 or so, 547.5. Then after the PMI data comes out, if we get a dip, we'll be looking for a retest of 545. If not, lower levels. We have this imbalance to fill in the 4-hour. I do see us potentially dipping to at least the 544 zone as the most likely possibility. But look for a pop and drop as the most likely possibility first. All right, for Tesla, Tesla's not looking that great because even though this was trying to establish an uptrend, it's kind of like struggling to hold this key support. And we have a double top like structure, so it does look to me like we could dip a little bit more. Now, just know we have a big catalyst coming out within a week and a half from now when we have their deliveries data coming out. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I think that Tesla could, and just know we have resistance currently around this. Uh, very important zone. We have 183 as resistance in the 185. And then we have support currently at 180. If we lose 180, we're going to be dipping down to 178. This looks kind of weak right now. So look for a little retest of 173, 183, excuse me. Then it dip all the way down to 173 is the most likely possibility. It does look a bit more bearish. So I could see a little bit more downside, especially thanks to this imbalance. So I'll be watching to see if we break all the way down to 178. Now for NVIDIA, we're actually looking kind of weak right now, at least technically speaking on the four hour time frame. We're currently at 130 support. This is actually the key support. If we bounce off this, I'll be looking for a retest of 134. This is where we had resistance. And if we fail to bounce here, if we kind of like pop and then drop quickly, if we lose 130, we'll be dipping all the way down to 125, in my opinion, to fill the gap. That's also previous resistance becoming support. So I expect the 125s if we lose 130. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin's looking kind of weak. It's been on a bit of a downtrend, continuing to fall and fall and fall and fall. Uh, look for a retest of 65,379. And if we reject, there will be dipping all the way down towards 64,000. So I do see it kind of dipping into the 64,000 area, especially 64,250. Look for a pop and drop is the most likely possibility and more potential downside. For even more tickers, I just wanted to call out, we also have the triple Q. The QQQ is just barely holding the 4-hour four 480 area. That's going to be our 20 EMA. I think that there might be a little rebound coming thanks to that. I think we could be retesting like 483. This is previous support becoming resistance. Maybe 482.5 and then 483. We'll be watching that range. And then if we establish a lower high, just like that of SPY, we'll be expecting even more downside. So I'll be watching those levels very carefully. The QQQ is known for being very, very tight and being very, very volatile during certain periods. So like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we go up to either 482.5 to 483. Then we continue lower and we start dipping back down to 480. If we close below 480, expect even more downside. I'll, I'll be looking at 478 next. So I see the risks. I see that there is potential for us to dip lower. And that looks very probable in my personal opinion. For Apple, Apple, in my personal opinion, is also kind of looking weak because we have a double top like structure. The four hour is turning weaker and we also lost our 20 EMA. So the next target is going to be 206. It's very likely we're going to be testing that. Could we rebound, retest the 20 EMA at like 212? It's possible we get a little pop. But then I do see potential for us to dip down to this imbalance at 206 as the most likely possibility. So Apple looks like it has a bit more downside potential, which could drag many of the indices lower. So that's looking very probable as well based off current technicals. So that being said, guys, that is it for the main five we typically talk about. Now we're just going to focus on the next couple tickers. Palantir is looking kind of weak to me. 
I wouldn't be surprised if we retest 25.5. If we reject off that, we're going to likely dip all the way down to 24.8. That's going to be my target. We'll see if that holds or not. If we don't hold that, I'll be looking for 24 flat. So I see some more potential downside for Palantir, at least for the short term. For Supermicro, we called the move almost precisely. I said it's going to either go up to 1,000 or 1,020. In fact, I marked the levels right here. My two potential targets, 1,000, 1,020. And then we got a rejection all the way back down. So this is showing weakness on the four-hour time frame. Look for, it depends if we can break 940 or not if we fail to do so. I see us going all the way down to 888 and then 850. So I think we might be dipping down to 888. Look for a pop and drop, and I think the 880s are <laughs> excuse me, likely going to be coming. For Rivian, we got some bad news for Rivian. That's why it's down 6%. So bad news came out. It looks to me like since we lost this support at 10.7, we're going to dip all the way down to about 9.9. .9. So look for a little dip on Rivian, a little pop and drop like move and more potential downside. For SoFi, SoFi is on a bit of a downtrend right over here on the four hour time frame. Um, I think that there's a very good chance um, that we continue to dip lower. And I think that there is potential for us to dip all the way down to this previous level. I think that's 6.09 and $6 are likely potential targets for SoFi. There's a very good chance we might be dipping even lower towards 6. For the IWM Rosa 2000, we had our big test. Remember yesterday I said something. Remember yesterday I said we might be testing 202. Watch to see if we reject or not. If we broke 202, we're bullish. If we reject, we're bearish. What happened? We hit 202. We kind of rejected. We failed to hold that level. If we break 202, we're back to bullish. If we could try to you know, break and hold it, if we fail to do so, we're going to be dipping. This imbalance suggests we're going to likely go down to 198. So I'll be watching that just to be safe. For AMD, AMD is trying to push a little higher. We have resistance all the way here around 164, and we have support down towards 159. In my personal opinion, I think there's a good chance that we might try to push higher towards uh, this little imbalance fill all the way up here. I think that we might be retesting 165 and then we might just shuffle up here, but that's the most likely possibility. For ARM, ARM is also looking a little bit weak right now. We're losing our 20 EMA. So, you know, we have resistance at 160 and also at 164. And if we continue to fall, we'll be dipping all the way down towards uh, the first level is going to be 156 to 153. So I, I could see this actually dipping a little bit lower to at least 156. So I anticipate some downside there. And also 153 will likely be tested. This is where we have this shop zone. So look for more downside on ARM, unfortunately. Coinbase looking a little bit weak. Double top leg structure. This imbalance suggests 230 is likely coming. Uh, if we hit 230, let's see if we bounce it up. But I do anticipate a little bit more downside. I think that also aligns with our 200 EMA. So tomorrow, 230 may be tested. Watch for that very carefully. It's the most likely possibility. Amazon is forming a cup right now, so it's going to likely try to go higher towards about 187. Maybe some news is about to come out. We have a cup right here. We could be forming like a, a little dip and then a, a pump for a cup and handle, or we could just go straight to 187. So I do see a cup and handle like structure. I think that's the most likely possibility, so we'll see how it goes, but that's something that's worth noting. For Meta, Meta is looking kind of flat right now. We have supports currently at 500, then 496. The resistance at 502 and 505. My gut tells me it's just going to consolidate for some time, then maybe dip down to about 496. But I see a little bit more potential for downside, at least moving forward. For Microsoft, if we end up losing 443, we'll be dipping all the way down. Well, actually, I think that we're going to be testing at like 442. I think there's a good chance it might dip a little bit to 443 to 442, then we'll see if we bounce or not. But I do see a little downside coming. We have a double top, and then we have previous... Resistance becoming support that's going to be tested. So look for a little bit of downside. Google's indecisive trading kind of sideways right now. It's building a little bit of strength. But the problem with Google is we have a head and shoulders. So I'll be watching to see if we get a rejection. If we lose 176, we're going to be looking for a big dip all the way down to the lower 170s. If we break past 180, I'll be looking for a big pump. We've been stuck between this range for quite some time. So I think we're going to remain range bound. Unless we end up losing 176, we turn bearish. It's got to be one of those two. Most likely, we'll see. But watch that for key support. GameStop is trying to push a little bit. If we break past 27, we'll be looking for a big pump all the way up into the 30s. I'll be waiting for that. AMC is dipping a little bit. We'll be looking for a test of potentially this imbalance at 4.96. 4.69, excuse me. So then we could be dipping all the way down there. So I'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case. For DJT, we're also dipping a little bit right over here. We could be dipping down to where this bottoming structure is in the 22. So I do see a little bit more downside potential for 22. The VIX is trying to push. It's testing the four hour 200 EMA. If we break this tomorrow, the VIX is going to be going, it's going to go flying all the way up to at least 14, which would be a bearish signal for the markets. If not, we'll just wait and see. We do have an inverse head and shoulders, so we will see what this leads to, but just keep that in the back of your mind. 
The 10-year treasury yield looks like it might try to rebound a bit. We'll see if that's the case, maybe depending on some data tomorrow. So I'm waiting for that. And the dollar got a breakout. So I said, if we end up hitting 105 and lose it, look for a big drop. If we bounce off this, we're going to try to rebound. The dollar is trying to rebound, and now we have an, a nice accumulation structure right here. So it looks bullish. It looks like it's going to try to push a little bit higher past or towards 106. If that's the case, it's going to lead to even more downside in the markets. So make sure you watch that carefully. With that being said, guys, the market has pushed quite a bit, approaching some tough resistance. Now for SPY, we're just going to be watching to see what the next move is. We need a follow through move for me to turn really bearish. We need to see another lower high and lower low be established and uh, you know, another red day tomorrow. If that's the case, I'll be looking for that gap fill all the way down to the 537 area or us to get very close, if anything. All right, so there is more down downside potential. We're watching to see if we get a follow through move tomorrow. It's going to be a big day. We have lots of options, expirations, and big data coming out in the morning. So we'll see how things go. All right, that's it for this one. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow before the market opens to, to kind of like go over all the other pieces of data. All right, have a great day, guys, and peace out.